warm welcome to you to St Jude's today. My name is Andrew Schmidt. I'm joined in leading the service by Philippa Scuya and Andrew Goddard, who's celebrating communion today. And we also welcome our guests, Philip and Jessica Vance Biker for Mission Sunday, whom we'll be meeting in just a moment. Our service is on our yellow sheet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our sentence set for today from Psalm 84. O Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, <coughs> cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Lord, have, have mercy on us and write your law in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Let us pray the collect of the day. God, our Father, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass man's understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite Philip and Jessica up. So, as you'll know, everyone, this is uh, Mission Sunday, a special Sunday of the year that we set aside to focus on, on world mission. And today, uh, to help us do that, we have our, our guests, Philip and Jessica, who are with a BCA in Yapoon, Queensland. How far up the coast is Yapoon? Uh, I studied Esther and I worked out yes. <laughs> that the same distance from Sydney to Yapoonish yes. was about the entire nation of Xerxes. Okay. So how far is that? From India to yeah. Ethiopia. Okay, wow. Is that right? Well, That's a fair distance. About 1,300 kilometres. <laughs> Eight hours drive north of Brisbane might be another way. So Excellent. halfway between there and Townsville. Excellent. Well, welcome. Um, uh, I, I thought it might be good if um, you could tell us first, um, what do you love about being a Christian? Uh, I have children and therefore I listen to Colin Buchanan. Right. Uh, but I do love that he has put so <laughs> succinctly... The best thing about being a Christian, I find, is just the joy of following Jesus. Yes. Just true joy, I think. That's awesome. Uh, for me, it's the hope of the resurrection. Uh, we can put our hope in anything else in the world and it will fail us eventually, but that great hope that we will rise again to live with Christ forever, um, and that is what our hope is in, and that, I love that. Yeah, that's good. I love that too. Uh, what do you do in your poon? Here we go. Uh, Jessica... <laughs> Jessica um, serves as the chaplain at our local state school. Uh, I'm the assistant minister at the Anglican Church. Uh, and so I uh, look after families, kids, youth, uh, baptism families. And a day a week I'm across the diocese, uh, which is a very long way, uh, looking after families and helping churches uh, best minister to children and young people. Um, now that's what we do like kind of for a job, but we didn't know if you meant that or what do you do in your poon? And so that's how Jessica interpreted the question. So yes. is it all right if Jessica answers, what would you do if you went there? Well, yes, bearing in mind we've only got a couple of minutes, yeah, but yes. Right. It's, it's 
pretty, there's not a lot to do. Oh, okay. So okay. we go to the beach. <laughs> Short answer. Yeah. Mm. And we drink a coffee because the coffee's quite good. Okay, that's, that's great. It. Excellent. That, that's good too. I'm in favour of beaches and coffee. Yeah. This is going really well. Um, <laughs> tell us something good that's happened in your ministry. Uh, we have grown a youth group from our th two children uh, to about 15, 16, and we have non-church uh, teenagers coming along. We get, some of them asked for Bibles last year. We gave them out. They came back this year, and they brought their Bibles, and, they are, and Jessica asked a question, uh, the silly question in youth group. Um, imagine you could, would you rather have a phone, a phone, that d phone directly to the President of the United States or the maker of the universe. And one of these girls said, what a sh she didn't think it was a sensible question, because we can pray to God anytime. Why would you even ask such a question? <laughs> and so just seeing these teenagers who have no church background, knowing Jesus uh, has been the most exciting thing for us. Yes, that's tremendous. That's, that's great news. Yeah, that's tremendous. You, you, are you? Yeah, same thing. <laughs> Um, what, so tell us what's on your heart that you are praying about and you'd like us to pray about for your ministry and the people of Yapoon. Our youth group in Kids Club is growing mm. and we need leaders. And if you guys wanted to move to Yapoon, <laughs> we'd love that. Uh, <laughs> but there's not a lot of young adults and uh, people in church who could do it. So we would pray that there would be that we could train and raise up leaders so that our youth group and kids yes. club can keep growing. We've got some very faithful servants who are very good at providing food and administrative things for the children and things um, who find it out of their depth to serve at youth group. Yes. That would be what we're praying for. Yes, okay. That's great. Yeah, well, we'd love to pray for, um, for, for God to raise up those leaders. Um, for your youth and kids club, and across the across the diocese, and across the diocese, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, that's fantastic. We're going to be praying for you later on in the service, so uh, thank you for being with us here today. I'll get you to return to your seat, and I just want to add something very briefly uh, by way of an announcement, uh, which is just to remind you uh, that we are going to have a special morning tea today. Um, to, uh, to support and encourage uh, Philip and Jessica. Um, there is a, there's a yummy morning tea of, of scones and uh, tea and coffee. Um, there's a donation of $5 for that, but feel free to give more than that uh, because it's going to BCA. Uh, and if there is any chance that, for, for any reason, that you weren't planning to come to morning tea, but you would still like to give a donation to BCA, there are some envelopes. There's not one on every single pew, but there's one nearby. You can grab one of those envelopes and put your donation into it and put it into the offertory. Um, but more than just um, the financial support, uh, what I certainly want us to be doing is praying for Philip and Jessica and for all the BCA. There's also information, postcards about them in the pews. You can take those home. So that's for you to take home and put on your fridge to remind you to pray for them. I am now going to invite John to come forward to bring us our Bible reading, which Philip is going to be preaching to us uh, from uh, in just a little while. Uh, our reading today comes from Book two, Samuel book two, chapter nine. David asked, is there anyone still in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David and the king said to him, are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? the king asked. Ziba answered, He is in the house of Machia, son of Amiel in Lodabar. 
So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Machir, son of Emil. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honour. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? When the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mithi Sheath ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. And Mithi Sheath uh, had a son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mithi Sheath. And Mithi Sheath lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. He was lame in both feet. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The psalm set for today is Psalm 40, which is a psalm of thanksgiving to the God of salvation. Shall we say the whole psalm together? I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up from the pit to roaring waters out of the mire and clay and set my feet upon a rock and made firm my foothold. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even a song of thanksgiving to our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who has made the Lord his hope, who has not turned to the proud or to those who wander in deceit. O Lord my God, great are the wonderful things which you have done, and your thoughts which are towards us. There is none to be compared with you. Were I to declare them and speak of them, they are more than I am able to express. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 4 beginning at the fourth verse. Glory, Glory to, to you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Now he had to go through Samaria so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus tired as he was from the was tired from the journey sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Let us respond to the reading of the word by declaring our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please have a seat. Thank you for the invitation to be here. Let me pray as we come to this part of God's word. Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence. May your word be our rule, your spirit our teacher, and your great glory our supreme concern. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As I lead youth groups, one of the things I like to do to get conversation going, particularly with the boys, is you know, tell us your uh, brush with fame, the time your soccer team was in the local newspaper, or for us, we caught the, there were two planes leaving Brisbane to come to Sydney. The plane next to ours had Larry Emder from the TV, and our plane had Guy Sebastian on it yesterday. That was our, that's my brush with fame this week. I'm not sure it's going to get any better. But it's interesting, you see these celebrities on TV, they're nice. But when you see them on a plane, when you sit near them and see how they interact with the other people around them, with a crying baby, with the flight staff, you start to get a picture. What are they like in real life? What are they like off the camera? I wonder about God's king. What was he like? The great King David. We've seen, you know, he fought Goliath and won. But when the cameras are off, what is he really like? Uh, if we sat next to him on a plane, would we be impressed? Is he a kind or a horrible person? Today, as we look at 2 Samuel chapter 9 that was read for us, and we're also going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 10, we're going to ask the question, how does the king treat other people? In verse 1, we read, uh, David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Our first point, if you're following along, is the kindness of the king. You might recall the night John Howard was elected prime minister. It was referred to as the night of the long knives. All of these uh, high-ranking government officials lost their jobs. Those faithful to the old government were gone, and the government, new government brought in new uh, people to replace them. In a similar way in the ancient world, when a new king comes to power, you get rid of all the old king's family. Uh, you don't want them there uh, threatening your kingship. In 2 Samuel, David is the new king. He's arrived there because God put him there. So how will God's new king deal with the family belonging to the old king? 
Uh, he goes beyond what people would expect. He inquires, is there anyone left that I can show kindness to? He goes out of his way. And we're told about an, uh, Jonathan's son named Mephibosheth, which is hard to pronounce. Uh, he had, a, as a result of an accident, this man could not walk. David summons him uh, to be brought to him. Mephibosheth bows down and realizes he's in the presence of the great king. And he refers to himself, I'm your servant, I'm a dead dog to you. This man cannot walk, he is vulnerable. David doesn't kill him off as you might expect in the ancient world. David shows incredible kindness in three ways. He gives him land that belonged to his grandfather. He arranges for this man to sit at the king's table every meal. And he arranges people to work the land for him. David stands to gain nothing from this. This man will never be useful in David's army. He will never be impressive in the palace. But David provides what belongs to him and people to work for it. Uh, he provides him security. David is a kind king. As we read into the next chapter, chapter 10, the king of the Ammonites has died. David again shows kindness. He sends a delegation to show sympathy to that other nation. David is kind. Now, when I buy flowers for my wife, uh, there are comments that I get. Oh, what did you do wrong? One neighbour once said to me, you're supposed to leave those at the funeral, Philip. Uh, various comments that uh, all meant in jest. But it's the reaction when I buy flowers for my wife, how people react. There is nothing that David was trying to cover up or uh, as he showed a delegation to this other nation. He was being genuinely kind. He had nothing to gain from it. We see in our first uh, point this morning the kindness of the king. Uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 10 we read, When David's men came to the land of the Ammonites, the Ammonite commanders said to Hanan, Hunan, uh, their lord, Do you think David is honouring your father by sending envoys to you to express sympathy? Hasn't David sent them to you only to explore the city and spy it out and overthrow it? So Hanan uh, seized David's envoy, shaved off half of each, man, each man's beard and cut off their garments at the buttocks and sent them away. Our second point this morning, the kindness of the king is spurned. I assume you've, we've all seen kindness spurned in various ways. A few years ago I worked at uh, Roses Only, excuse me, Roses Only in the middle of Sydney on Valentine's Day. We had a phone call. A lady received flowers. She did not want them. Is there any way that I can return these flowers and that man get, his, uh, get a refund on the flowers that he's bought for me? Horrible story. That kindness rejected. In 2 Samuel, uh, the king of the Ammonites has died. David shows kindness. He goes out goes out of his way to, to show kindness to these people. They think he's playing a trick on them and they doubt his kindness. They think he's sent spies to check them out. The king does not believe David's motive. The king listens to his commanders. They grab these men and treat them shamefully, cutting off half their beards and cutting off their pants so they're half naked. Embarrassing and shameful. A deliberate effort to disgrace David and reject his kindness. Again, we see David showing kindness. He it says to that delega delegation of men, stay in Samaria until your beards grow back, when, uh, rather than return in shame. We're not told it, but I'd like to think that David also sends them some new clothes. We can see this morning, the kindness of the king is spurned. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7, we read, On hearing this, David sent Joab with the entire army of fighting men. 
our third point this morning. Those who reject the kindness of the king will face the wrath of the king. Our world loves for things to be fair. We think we like the idea of karma. When someone does something evil, they get evil back. We think we like that. We love the idea of bad people getting their comeuppance. Thankfully, karma isn't real or we'd be in real trouble. The Ammonites realize what they've done. They've become obnoxious to King David. They have rejected his kindness. But at no point do they think, we should say sorry. They kind of double down and keep going. They hire a bunch of soldiers from the surrounding countries to come and fight with them. David hears what the Ammonites did to his delegation, to his men. Then he hears they've assembled a giant army. David assembles his entire army. He sends them out to fight. David leading his army. They fight and kill 40,000 soldiers. The Ammonites hired 33,000 soldiers. They lost a lot of soldiers that day. The smart ones that were still alive made peace with David by becoming his servants. Our third point this morning. Those who reject the kindness of the king will face the wrath of the king. I started this morning by asking the question, how does the king treat other people? One option we could say is, David was kind, you be kind too. But I'm not sure that's the message of 2 Samuel chapters 9 and 10. And also, as you read the other things that David does after this, you don't, I don't want you to copy David. <laughs> I think that's, the, in one sense, the impossible application. We read this passage as Christians on this side of Jesus. We can see the king of God's kingdom is kind. And that points us to Jesus. Jesus is the king of God's kingdom. And Jesus is kind. In our gospel reading from John 4, we saw that kindness of Jesus. That's just one of many examples of how Jesus is kind to people. Especially the poor, the lame, the vulnerable. He came to preach the good news to the poor. His, in his kingdom, he heals the lame man. All David did was show kindness and let him sit at his table, uh, share at his table. But when people reject the kindness of the king, they will face the wrath of the king. Like the Ammonites, they rejected God, God's king, and they keep on rejecting him. When people in our world reject God, they keep rejecting him. And they will face God's wrath. God will administer his justice towards them. And even then, they will continue to reject God and not think of repentance. Our king is kind. And to you today, I want to ask, have you accepted his kindness? Have you responded to it? God in his kindness sent Jesus to, to die, to rise and live again so that you can be forgiven of your rejection of God. Have you come to him in repentance? And I'm confident many of you have. If you have not accepted him, when he returns, you will have to answer to the king for the way that you have treated him. Thanks to the Bush Church Aid Society, and thanks to churches like St. Jude's uh, Ramwick, our family is able to serve the Lord in Yakuma. This kindness of our God is what we aim to share with the people in our area, right across central Queensland. I think we have 50 children in our churches and maybe 25 teenagers. There are many people across central Queensland that do not know about the kindness of our king. You've got the people in this area who desperately need this message. We pray for you as you share this kindness of the king with our, in your area. Please continue to pray for us and support us as we desperately share this message with people who do not know it. We want to see our area, which is the Capricorn Coast. I know you've never heard of it, but we share with the Capricorn Coast the kindness of the king 
that they might respond. Let me pray. Our Father, we thank you that you are kind and sent Jesus that we might know you. We pray that in across Ramwick and the eastern suburbs of Sydney, people would know the kindness of you and respond rightly. We pray the same for the Capricorn Coast. Please help us, our two churches, to work together in gospel partnership that this may news may be spread widely. Amen. We turn to our offertory hymn, and we'll be singing of God's kindness. Hymn 602, O love that will not let me go. Let's stand and sing together. come now to a time of prayer. Let us pray for all people and the church throughout the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy apostles to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We ask you in your mercy to receive our prayers, which we offer to your divine majesty. Heavenly Father, you asked your disciples to spread the word of your Son's saving grace throughout this world. We thank you that in remote and regional parts of Australia, Bush Church Aid has been carrying out this task since 1919. We praise you for the work being carried out in the Coons of BC Aid by Philip and Jessica Van Spiker and their four children. We ask you to continue to support guide and enthuse them as they work among the people of northern Queensland so that through you their work will bring many to Jesus. Compassionate God, you made us in your image and intended us for creative work. Look with love on those who are unemployed or underemployed. Please provide appropriate work for all who need it and just payment and recognition for their labour. God of truth, we pray for the University of New South Wales, that it may be a place of sound learning 
new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom. May all who teach and all who learn seek and love the truth and in humility look to you, the source of all wisdom and learning. Loving God, we thank you for the growth of the youth group and the way you have supplied new leaders. We ask you to continue to grow the groups and provide the leaders with enthusiasm, skill and a sense of fun as they guide the youth on a journey towards you. We remember today all those named in our prayer journal, asking you to provide love and support in their hours of need. We turn to the yellow sheet. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the ways of righteousness and peace and guide their rulers in wisdom and justice for the tranquility and good of all. Bless especially your servant Elizabeth our Queen <coughs> and our Governor General David Hurley, her representatives and ministers, her parliaments and all who exercise authority in this land. Grant that they may impartially administer justice, restrain wickedness and vice and uphold integrity and truth. We beseech you to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Kanishka, our Archbishop, Michael, our Bishop, Andrew, our Rector, Andrew, Jim and Emma that by their life and doctrine they may set forth your true life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people give your heavenly grace and especially your people this, to this congregation here present, that they may receive your word with meek hearts and due reverence and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We ask you of your goodness, Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. We also bless your holy name for all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. Give us grace to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Grant this, Father, for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen and comfort you. But first, let us make a humble confession of our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ maker, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed by thought, word and deed against, against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and our heart is sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all his past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Taking up our hymn books again, uh, our communion hymn today is number 584, Just as I am without one plea but that your blood was shed for me. We're going to omit verse 5.
hear the words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. Jesus said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, mighty creator and eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord Lord God of hosts, heaven and and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come come to your your table, table, Most Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we who receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, According to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of the most blessed body and blood, who, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and, when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. I now invite those who are joining us online from home to join me in taking communion together. Let us take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us and be thankful.
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come. your will will be be done done on on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today today our our daily daily bread. bread. Forgive Forgive us our our sins as we forgive forgive those who sin against us. Lead Lead us not into into temptation, but but deliver us from from evil. For the the kingdom, kingdom, the the power, and and the glory glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, entirely desire your fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice, humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we are unworthy through our many sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory are yours. Father, world without end. Amen. Amen. Jessica in the carriage room for a special morning peace appreciation. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.